What's, What's up, up explorers? explorers? Welcome back to our channel. We're the Choose here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world. And save a dollar. So we just came back from an amazing five-day trip in St. Martin and... St. Martin! <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing and we did so much. But today, this video is all about things that you need to know before you go to St. Martin. So if you guys are planning on a trip or you're just curious, be sure to stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. So the first thing that you need to know is that it's an island of two different countries. There's a Dutch side and there's a French side. But actually, it's a lot less significant than you would imagine. You can actually drive from side to side without much change going on. They're not going to stamp your passport and you're not really going to tell that it's a different side of the country until you see the sign. It's almost more like you're visiting neighboring towns than neighboring countries. The next thing that you need to know are the different seasons in St. Martin. So being that it is in the Caribbean, it's not like we have in North America where they have fall, winter, spring, and summer, but they do have two different seasons. So they have the wet season and they have the dry season. And pretty much during both seasons, it's going to be warm because you are in the Caribbean. So we were there during the wet season, which is also the hurricane season. So it's a less popular time to visit, which was good because there weren't a lot of tourists in a lot of places. But at the same time, that made it the low season. So a lot of the food places were actually not open. There are also different activities that weren't necessarily open either. But honestly, I think this is a perfect time if you want to go on a romantic getaway with your queen. It's perfect because we had beaches to ourselves, we had restaurants to ourselves, we had a lot of things to ourselves, and we also had a more local vibe versus being surrounded by a ton of tourists. But just to be mindful, it is going to be raining a little more, but from our experience, it rained in the morning, maybe like right when sunrise was happening, like 6 or 7 o'clock, and it rained for like... 20 minutes but it was a hard rain but then it pretty much was clear the rest of the day until maybe later on in the day it rained again but just be mindful to please check for the hurricane schedule before you guys go because you do not want to be stuck in the caribbean on a hurricane or a natural storm and also it's very popular to do day trips from saint martin but some of the islands are closed during the low season but we'll get more into that later on in the video so stay tuned for that another thing to know about low season are typically speaking Flight prices are going to be a lot cheaper as well as accommodations will be a lot cheaper because there are less tourists. So that can also play in your favor as well. Also during the low season we notice a lot more sargasm on the beach and it has a very distinct smell. And it also does not make the beaches look as pretty because it doesn't look as well maintained but you do have the beach to yourself. <laughs> And also there's a lot of activities during low season like we went to the natural pool and we had it all to ourselves, which is a unique experience as well. On the contrary though, high season, there's a lot more tourists, there's a lot more people, things are a little bit more expensive, but there are going to be a lot more things to do, there's going to be more things up and running, and a lot of things will be more open and available to tourists during this time. Alright, so our next point is going to be about our experience with currency. So being that it is in the Caribbean and so close to the United States, a lot of places did take the USD. Actually, we didn't find one place that didn't take our US currency. Being that there are a lot of Europeans that come as well, they also did accept the Euro. So we actually came with the USD, but got changed from a lot of places in the Euro. And when we did go to the ATM to get money out, they actually gave us euros. So that's not really the confusing part. The confusing part is during our stay, a lot of places accepted the USD and the euro at a one-to-one -one conversion rate. A lot of times the euro is more valuable than a dollar. So just be mindful that if it does say a one-to-one -one conversion ratio, if you are spending the euro at the USD price, you're actually losing money. But the safest way to get the best conversion is just to use your card. Make sure you have a card that has no foreign transaction fees and you'll be gold in here. In most places accepted credit cards, but if you go to some of the local restaurants, like where the Lolos are, they're going to be cash only. So now we'll get into how St. Martin is a really small island. So looking at a map, I didn't realize how really small the island is, but driving around, you will realize. So we actually got a rental car. We got it for around 80 something dollars for four full days. And we were able to drive around the whole island within like two or three hours, which is mind boggling because we saw so much in one day. We actually were kind of lost and we ended up there seeing everything on accident that first, that second day. And honestly, the best way to see the island is going to be with a rental car. One of the best things about using a rental car here is they drive on the same side of the road as we do 
as Americans, so it was easy to navigate around the island. But having a rental car will give you a lot of freedom and flexibility, which is everything you want on the island. So speaking about getting around, we're going to go into buses and public transportation. So during our stay, we did rent a car, but all around the island, we saw signs for bus stops and public transportation. They had them in French as well as in Dutch. And we can't read any of them, but we did see the big sign that had a bus on it. So <laughs> I think I'm good with sign language and I understood that much. It's self-explanatory, honestly. But that does run on its own schedule and you don't have the freedom and flexibility. But if you don't want to drive or you just want to relax, the buses and public transportation are a lot cheaper than taking these taxis. So now we're going to get into where you're going to stay in St. Martin. So being that the island is so small, there's a wide variety of options where you can stay and be close by to everything. But we actually stayed on the front side and we had a phenomenal experience in our Airbnb. We actually had a beautiful view of the pool, the mountains, and we even had a private beach in the back. But there's actually a lot of really great places that you can stay whether you're staying on the French side or on the Dutch side. And we have a lot of top recommended accommodations included in our Explore St. Martin travel guide that's linked in the description below. So you're going to want to check that out. The next thing that kind of surprised me are the amount of casinos that I saw, especially on the Dutch side. Personally, I felt that the Dutch side really catered to American tourists. They had a lot of casinos, they had a lot of English language, and it seemed more built up than the French side. While that was our experience on the Dutch side, the French side was a bit different because it seemed more like local living. So the next thing to know about St. Martin is that it's a beautiful island of mountains. And one of our favorite landscapes are mountainous landscapes. One of my favorite things when I'm on vacation, especially in the Caribbean, is driving through the peaks and valleys of the mountains and having the crystal clear blue turquoise water on one side and the luscious green mountains on the other side. And I don't know why during this time, but there were so many white butterflies <laughs> everywhere the most butterflies i've ever seen in my life literally here in saint martin it must be the season yes we were there in september and it looked like snowfall but obviously there's no snow in the caribbean right <laughs> <laughs> but, just butterflies but i love saint martin because of the mountains and the landscapes of the island and while it did have so many hills and mountains when we actually went to the natural pool we saw a different side of saint martin which kind of reminded us of aruba so it was dry desert cactus and dirt. Still beautiful, but just a different side of the island. So I love the diversity of St. Martin. So now let's get into the day trips that you can do from St. Martin. There are so many islands that are nearby. So being in St. Martin is amazing because just looking across the water, especially if it's a clear day, you can see so many different islands. While there, we saw St. Bart's across the water. We saw Anguilla. We visited Pinell Island. There's a plethora of different islands you can visit right there in St. Martin. But something to keep in mind is when you plan to go to visit these islands. So we went during low season, so a lot of activities and places to stay and things to do on these islands were not open during the time that we went. So it wasn't really worth it for us to go to these islands uh, during the time, but we'll just have to make a trip to go back when it's not low season. But we actually did get to go to Pinell Island, and that was an incredible experience, even during the low season. And you can see more of that experience in our full vlog that's linked below in the description. One of the best experiences that I hear about is going to Pinell Island. And we took the ferry, but we actually met a lot of people who kayaked over there. And it's not a far kayak. You can actually see it from where the dock station was. So they say it takes about 30 minutes on the kayak, and you can rent the kayak for the day. And while you're kayaking, a lot of people that we met there said that they saw a lot of sea turtles kayaking. So that is an extraordinary experience that I would highly recommend if you guys have the strength and muster to <laughs> kayak across the lake or Caribbean Sea or whatever it is. I just wanted to take the quick ferry, so you can do that too. <laughs> The next thing that you definitely need to be aware of is that there is nudity on the beaches in St. Martin. <laughs> so being here during low season, a lot of the beaches were private, meaning it was just my wife and I. So we didn't really see too much nudity during our stay. But I do hear that a lot of the beaches have nudity, especially on the French side. In particular, I hear that Orient Bay is, but we were the only people there besides some sargasm on the beach. But there was one instance where my wife and I were on a beach and it was actually our favorite beach. You guys can check that out on our full vlog. But 
we went somewhere and we were in like a hidden cave beach and it was a phenomenal experience and we looked up and over our shoulder and there was a man standing with all his might hands on the hips like a superhero and his thing is just swinging in the wind it was a different experience you know he's free to do what he needs to do but it was not what i expected to see during the sunset but this is something that you can very well expect when you go to a beach in St. Martin. So just be aware. Be prepared for it. <laughs> and don't be shocked because we did tell you. Remember, the Chews told you there is some nudity on the beach. So something really cool that you can actually see on the beaches are planes flying right over your head. So being that the island is so small, it needs space for the runway. So there is nowhere else to put it but right on the beach. And I love that. So we flew into Princess Juliana International Airport or SXM and on arrival we looked down and we saw so many people on the beach waving to us. It was an interesting experience. We actually went to Maho Beach three separate times to try to see the experience that we saw on the plane but reverse it and now we're on the beach. The first time we went and we actually got rained out. The second time we went and it was really early in the morning but the third time we wisened up we checked the flight schedule, we checked the weather report, and we found that there was a golden time to see the planes. And during this one to two hour break, we saw so many planes and we caught some amazing footage here in St. Martin. And the best part is seeing these planes land, like right over your head. It's so cool, really amazing experience. But also, you can also see planes depart, but I, don't, I didn't stick around for that part because I heard the jet plast can be a little bit dangerous i don't know i don't know uh you could get kind of i don't know it doesn't seem fun to me <laughs> i hear a lot of people get knocked over and there's definitely signs that say danger be careful for the jet blast because they even say the word death so i don't play with death <laughs> but i know if being on the beach and getting the sand blown in your eyes is not your gym literally right next to the beach is a bar where you can have beautiful views of seeing these planes depart and arrive so check that one out if you guys don't want to be on a beach. But Maho Beach isn't the only beach that you can have an up close and personal experience with the planes. You can also go on the front side to Grand Cas, which is also near another airport. So while it is a super cool experience and you do have the low flying planes, the airport is not literally on the beach like it is at Maho Beach, but it still is an amazing experience and a lot less people than at Maho Beach as well. So our next point is just how diverse St. Martin is. So being that St. Martin is a Caribbean island, with European influence that's close to the United States and has a lot of foreigners and expats, it is a super diverse place to be. It was definitely interesting to see the wide variety of people that are there. And this really ties into our next point with the diversity in the cuisine. And the food really shined during our stay here in St. Martin. We didn't have a single bad meal in St. Martin and I'm a picky eater and I literally loved everything that we ate. We saw Jamaican cuisine, Haitian cuisine, Dutch cuisine, French cuisine, Chinese, literally so much good food here, not one miss. And we included a ton of our top recommendations for restaurants in our Explore St. Martin travel guide, which again you can download from the link included in our description. So my next point is for all my adventurous travelers. I got some for you right here in St. Martin. St. Martin actually has the world's steepest zip line. At the Adventure Rain Park, they have a lot of different options for you to do from slides to zip lines to gondola rides. So much fun that you can bundle up into one package. Unfortunately, during our stay, we didn't do it, but it's something that we'll do on our next time. At least I will. At least he will. <laughs> <laughs> So our next point is that there's a lot of cruises that come. In fact, my very first time coming to St. Martin was on a cruise. So I know lots of people come on the cruises here. So the cruise port is on the Dutch side, right in Philipsburg, and there's a beautiful beach that's right there as well. However, with cruises comes crowds. So if you're not taking a cruise, you may not want to be there the same time that the cruises will be there if you want a more private experience. So next we're going to get into the national drink of St. Martin, which is actually the guava berry rum. So our Airbnb host actually introduced us to this liqueur and we had an incredible local tour. So we actually did this tour with Colombier or Colombier, uh, pardon me, I don't speak French. We did it with them and it was phenomenal. We actually met the owner and in 2022 they won the best taste for the guava berry. 
He has so many different flavors from mango to passion fruit to ginger. You name it, he probably messed around and made a flavor and they were all so good. So I highly recommend doing this tour, especially if you guys are here on a cruise or for an extended period of time. So this is important, especially if you're coming from the United States, you're going to need to bring a universal adapter because they use European outlets in St. Martin. And this is unless you're staying in a big hotel chain like a Hilton, a Marriott, or something like that. Or actually our Airbnb was phenomenal and he had an adapter for us ready as well. But we also came with our own. The one that we use is linked in the description and you can get that right off of Amazon very easy. And there you guys have it. We gave you guys so many tips in order to make your next trip to St. Martin a phenomenal one. But we have so many more tips included in our travel guide that's linked below, so be sure to grab you one. So thank you guys so much for checking out our channel. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys could be anywhere in the world, but you're sitting up watching this video with the choose, and we truly appreciate that. So we'll see you guys on the next one.